Hi everyone! Thanks for visiting my channel. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. It is a beautiful day here in Central Ohio. Little toasty outside, but still a perfect day for canning up some delicious peaches. Um, I was able to score some beautiful peaches. These are South Carolina peaches. The other day, my uh, husband and I took our little Yorkie and we took a little cycling trip to Amish country and at one of the fruit stands they had these delicious peaches. So I was excited to get them and can them up. Canned peaches are one of my family's favorite fruits to have on the shelf. They do not last very long usually. And um, I realized that I do not have a canning peaches 101 video for you guys. So this, will, this video will be great for those of you who are newbies. Maybe you're new to canning, maybe you're just new to canning fruit um, but it will also be I have some ideas up my sleeve some little Carol tips and tricks for those of you who may be seasoned canners I might be able to share some things that you had may have not thought of so no matter what level of canner you are I hope you'll stick around and enjoy what I have to say so peaches um, canning fruit is really a simple thing to do it's fantastic to have on your shelf um, the steps are fairly simple, you, but you want to make sure you follow appropriate guidelines for whatever fruit it is you are canning, obviously. You can find guidelines for canning up peaches in the ball books. They're in most of the ball canning books. The guidelines are also online at the National Center for Home Food Preservation. You can find them there. You can also find the guidelines in the USDA Complete Guide to Home Canning. Great resource here to have in your arsenal. Um, lots of places to find correct information. Just make sure you are using a trusted source when you are canning anything. So first things first, the, the guidelines I'm gonna be sharing with you are for nectarines or peaches. Uh, the guidelines do state peaches need to be peeled nectarines you can leave them leave the skins on also you need to know that only orange flesh peaches or nectarines are approved for home canning so no white flesh peaches um, one thing that I do want to note about this is ball does have on their website a picture of white flesh peaches in one of their recipes which leads you to believe that you can can those but they are not approved for canning i'm a little disappointed that they used that picture um, because you shouldn't can those so anyway just be aware of that even though you may see it in a photo they are not approved for canning so make sure you start with an orange flesh nectarine or peach we are going to peel our peaches uh, to do that we're just going to uh, quickly blanch them in boiling water just stick them in a pot of boiling water for 30 to 60 seconds then submerge them in ice water and the skins come off really easily that way and then you can cut them in half or you can slice them either way is appropriate for canning i am going to can mine in a light syrup Just a little note on syrups the National Center for Home Food Preservation and Ball differ in what they call a light syrup as far as water to sugar ratios go. I'm going to be using the light syrup that is in the all new Ball Book of Canning. It is on page 112 and it lists the uh, ratios for super light, extra light, light, medium, heavy, and honey syrups so you have all that information there i will also leave you a link in the description box below for the syrup ratios that are listed by the national center for home food preservation just be aware that they differ from ball so you choose what's appropriate for you i don't particularly like a thick syrup i really like or a heavy syrup i should say i prefer using more of a light syrup i really want the um flavor of the fruit to shine through. So I tend to lean towards what Ball is referring to as a light syrup. Technically fruits can be canned in just plain water and that may seem like an appealing thing to do for some of you who are trying to avoid extra sugar. However, please note that any fruit benefits from being canned in syrup. You don't 
necessarily have to have the sugar for it to be safe to can, but sugar does help preserve the texture and the color. So just like with jams and jellies that are full sugar, they last longer on your shelf. They retain their color much better than their low or no sugar counterparts. So it's up to you. You can can them in water. You can also can them in grape juice or apple juice if you prefer. You don't have to use a syrup. You can use sugar substitutes and I will leave uh, links to how to do that in the description box below. You can also use honey. So lots of options for what you want to pack them in. I am going to be using a light syrup. Now, as far as your syrup is concerned, this is where you can have a little bit of fun and change up the flavor of your peaches a little bit if you choose to do so. Some great add-ins to your syrups to give things a little bit of a twist. Um, you guys know how I like to use my liqueurs. Peach schnapps, a tablespoon or two of peach schnapps in each jar would be great for flavoring, adding some extra flavor into your peaches. Also, you could use cinnamon sticks, star anise, uh, allspice berries, or cloves are all great additions as well. Another great thing to use to infuse your syrup would be a vanilla bean. I have done this and it makes your syrup so delicious. And actually it's the syrup that I used in some apple slices that I did for you guys last fall. And I will link that video with an iCard and in the, the description box below where I show you how to make vanilla syrup. If you are a fan of peach melba, you could also infuse some raspberry flavor into your syrup and you could pack your peaches in a raspberry flavored syrup. I'm gonna be doing a video, I think, Hopefully it is on my list. I'm going to be canning up a raspberry syrup for you, um, show you how to do that. So you that would be great to pack your peaches in as well. So if you like that raspberry peach flavor, it is so good together. So look for that video. I'm gonna try to do that here shortly. Um, but that syrup would be a great thing to pack your peaches in if you enjoy the raspberry and peach flavor together. Now, as far as packing your peaches, we can raw pack them or we can hot pack them. I'm gonna be hot packing mine today. Once we have our syrup made, we are going to put our peaches in our syrup, just bring them just to a boil, just to heat them through, and then you can pack your jars and top them off with the hot syrup. Now, another note where there are some discrepancies, that is the instruction from the National Center of Home Food Preservation or the USDA. Ball has a little bit different method for hot packing. They state to heat your peaches in your syrup uh, a layer at a time and lightly simmer them for about three minutes. I think that's more cumbersome and you don't need to do that according to the National Center for Home Food Preservation. So we're gonna follow the instructions from the National Center for Home Food Preservation. So just be aware that there are some light discrepancies between ball ball's instructions and the national center for home food preservation just be aware of that neither one of them are wrong they just have a little bit of take different take on how to accomplish the same thing so lots of information i know um i try not to be too chatty but i do want to try to give you as much information as possible so that you understand what we're doing and where we're going. So we're gonna get started by making our syrup. All right, to make our syrup, I have two and a quarter cups of white granulated sugar. To that, I am going to add five and a quarter cups of water. And I like to use filtered water. You could use just plain tap water is fine. I just, that's just how I roll. <laughs> Um, I have a filter on my refrigerator, so it's not a big deal for me to do that. So we're going to stir that together. We're going to bring this up just to a simmer. You only have to heat it enough to get your sugar, sugar to dissolve in the syrup. It doesn't really need to be cooked at all. You just want your sugar to fully dissolve. The other point that I want to make is you want to keep a lid on your syrup until you're ready to use it. If you let it sit and simmer, you are gonna get some evaporation of your water and it, you will have less syrup and it will also thicken your syrup. So we don't want that to happen. I'm just gonna let it 
come up to temperature, heat through, and make sure my sugar is dissolved. And then I'm just gonna leave my lid on it and set it aside until I am ready to use it. So once we blanch our peaches and put them in the ice water to stop the cooking process, we are going to move them to another bowl that is going to have an ascorbic acid solution in it. That just helps to prevent the peaches from browning. I highly recommend that you do that as does the National Center for Home Food Preservation. So they're all a little bit different. I have the Mrs. Wages one. I think the ball one is a little bit different than that. You can also use um, lemon juice in water to keep them from browning as well. I will leave a link in the description box explaining how to do that. I'm gonna use the Mrs. Wages fruit preserver and you just are gonna follow the instructions given on whichever one you are using. For this one, uh, it says to preserve color and flavor in fruits and prevent browning, add three tablespoons of the fresh fruit preserver to a half a gallon of water. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do after I blanch my peaches, let them sit and hang out in that solution until I'm ready to start the canning process. Okay guys, my syrup is ready. I've just set it aside. I took it off the heat and put a lid on it. So to blanch our peaches, all you need to do is take a really sharp knife. You're going to put an X on the bottom and dump them in the boiling water. And I do about five or six at a time. And we're gonna let them hang out in the water for 30 to 60 seconds. And then once you'll see the skin will start to peel back and then you can remove it, plunge it in your ice water, uh, let it sit till it's cool enough to touch and then you can peel it, take the seed out and um, put it in your water with the ascorbic acid in it. Okay guys, I blanched all my peaches and peeled them, removed the pits, and I kept them in the ascorbic acid solution, like I told you. Um, now I have put my peaches in a big pot with my syrup. Now the recipe for the syrup that I used should yield enough syrup for about eight to nine pints, and I'm gonna be canning mine in pints. You can can this in quarts or pints. Um, I'm gonna be canning in pints, so we should get, I should get a full canner load out of this. I also used nine to 10 pounds of peaches. So that's what you're gonna need for a canner load of eight to nine pints. Uh, we are gonna be water bath canning this. You can pressure can peaches. I've never done that. I don't see the need to, but you can, and I'll leave a link with the instructions on how to do that. Um, but we are going to be steam canning. If you do not have a steam canner, you need to water bath can them. Now, as that's heating up, just I just wanna go over a little something about fruit. Fruit tends to float when you can it up. And one of the reasons that I'm hot packing is because hot packing is supposed to be a good solution to fruit float. So I'm going to hot pack today and see if that alleviates our problem. So if you've ever canned fruit and you have your fruit floating towards the top of your jar, that is why it's very common. When you heat your fruit first, it releases some of the air from the fruit and helps to prevent that from happening. Now, another thing that you can do to prevent, help prevent fruit float is you can use a uh, regular mouth jar instead of a wide mouth jar. That can be challenging with peaches. If you have peaches that are very big, they're not gonna fit nicely into a regular mouth jar and you're gonna have to use a wide mouth. Also, if you are packing peaches that are just cut in half, um, it's easier to maneuver them in a wide mouth jar as opposed to a regular mouth. But it is a solution to fruit float, um, so something to keep in mind. I have smaller peaches, so mine are gonna fit fine in the regular mouth, so I am gonna use the regular mouth jars, and I'm gonna use a couple of wide mouth, and we'll see if there's a difference with fruit float. What I did is I've got my peaches in my pot, I've poured the syrup over them. We're gonna bring it just to a boil and then we are ready to can things up. Now, we do not need to pre-sterilize jars or lids. Modern canning guidelines say we don't need to do that if we're processing for 10 minutes or more. We're gonna be processing for 20 minutes. If you are packing in pint or in quart jars, your processing time is gonna be 25 minutes. That is the instruction for hot packing. If you are raw packing your jars, your processing time is different. Um, if you are raw packing, your processing time for pints is 25 minutes and your processing time for quarts is 30 minutes. So there's a five minute difference in processing time depending on if you are, are raw packing or hot packing. So my instructions today are for hot packing only. So 
Once my peaches come up to temperature, I will bring you back and we will get started with canning. Also at this point, you wanna go ahead and heat the water in your canner. If you are water bath canning, you wanna make sure you have enough water in your canner that will cover your jars by an inch after you add your jars to your pot and you want your water to be at simmering. For steam canning, you want your water to be near simmering. And for the instructions for my canner are uh, three quarts of water in the bottom of your pot. So make sure you consult the instructions on whichever canner you are using and do what's appropriate for your canners. Okay guys, I brought my peaches up just to a boil. So we are ready to start the canning process. With peaches that are cut in half, you want the cut side down. Um, like I said, it can be a little challenging to get them in the jars that way, but that's ultimately what we want. So we're gonna fill our jars to a half of an inch head space. And actually a fork works well here to get them cut side down. So if you just wanna use a fork to put them in there, that will work. Okay, once you get to about of a half of an inch of head space, then you are going to top off your jars with your syrup. And we want to maintain our half inch head space. Once you get your syrup in there, you're gonna use a debubbling tool, chopstick, or plastic butter knife to release your air bubbles. When you release your air bubbles, your head space may change. The other thing you want to note is you wanna make sure your fruit is in fact covered with syrup. If you need to, you can top off with a little more syrup to maintain your half inch head space. Once you're happy with your head space, you're going to take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean the rims of your jars. We don't want anything to interfere with a good seal. Now at this point, you could also do your add-ins. Like I said, you could add a tablespoon or so of peach schnapps, you could add a cinnamon stick, you could add star anise or some cloves if you want to. Um, but I'm gonna leave mine just as they are. We're going to place our lids and then add our bands to fingertip tight. And then in the canner they go. Okay guys, I got about seven and a half pints. So about 10 pounds of peaches. It's just gonna depend on your peaches, but it should give you almost eight to nine pints. I didn't get quite eight, but I'm fine with that. So now we're going to go ahead and put our lid on our canner. We're gonna crank our heat up to high. If you are water bath canning, you wanna make sure you have enough water to cover your jars by at least an inch. Um, if you're steam canning, follow the instructions that come with your steam canner. I am going to bring my canner up to temperature. I have a dial gauge on the top of my steam canner that tells me when to start my processing time. If you're water bath canning, you wanna make sure you are at a full rolling boil, then you start your processing time. Once you reach uh, the full rolling boil or you are in your green zone for timing you want to adjust your heat just to maintain a full rolling boil or just to stay in your green zone you don't want it boiling too vigorously throughout the canning process so make sure you adjust your heat just to maintain where you need to be uh, we are going to process like i said for 20 minutes if you are processing in pints you're going to process for 25 minutes if you raw packed your processing times are going to be 25 and 30. Okay guys, we are back. Um, I'm finishing up processing my fourth batch of peaches. Um, I did that intentionally because I wanted to show you guys a few things about processing them. Just to wrap up, when you are finished with your processing time, you wanna go ahead and turn your heat off. You can go ahead and remove your lid and then let your jars cool in your canner for about five minutes. I think when you are processing fruit or anytime you are using a sugar syrup, they uh, it benefits you to let your jars cool down maybe even a little more than that 10 15 minutes in your canner to help with siphoning because sugar syrup is notorious for siphoning and especially i have found that to be especially true with steam canning so i let my jars sit an extra five, 10 minutes or so in my canner when I'm done to try and prevent that. I showed you processing for hot packing. So, but in the past, I've always done raw packing and I've had very good results with that. But today I wanted to show you the process and I wanted to do, to do some comparing. So my first batch, I did exactly what I showed you. I did the hot packing and then the rest of my batches, I did the, uh, raw packing because I wanted to do some comparisons. I did share with you that they state that if you 
um, hot pack instead of raw packing that helps with fruit float. So I did just a little bit of experimenting today to see if that's true because in the past I've not found it to be true. So I thought I will use all the same peaches, all the same process, and then we will determine if it works or not. So this jar of peaches was hot packed. And we have a little bit of floating, but I was able to pack my jar really well. I think the best defense against fruit float is packing your fruit as tightly as possible without crushing it. So this guy was able to be packed fairly tightly and I just have a little bit of floating going on. Here's another one from the same batch and I wasn't able because of the way that the peaches fit in the jar, I wasn't able to pack it quite as tightly and I have quite a bit of fruit float even though it was hot packed. So I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that assessment. Scientifically, that is supposed to be true. Hot packing is supposed to make it less floaty, um, but I have not found that to be true. So just to prove my point, here is a jar that was raw packed. And I put a cinnamon stick in him um, and he's, floating about the same amount as the first jar I showed you. So I don't really see any difference with hot packing versus raw packing. And personally, I prefer raw packing. I think that it is an easier and quicker process. That's just my opinion. So if you are interested in raw packing, I'll leave you a link to another video I did on processing um, sweet tea po poached peaches and I did do the raw packing process with those. So um, the process is basically the same. You just don't bring it up to a boil um, in the sugar syrup. So then I also wanted to show you, I did some slices this time. Usually I just do them in halves, which we've really liked, but I wanted to try something new this time. So I did some slices and I have a lot more floating. Even though I packed them as tightly as I possibly could, I still have a lot more float. So I don't know that I'm going to do the slicing again. I think um, processing them in halves, even though it can be kind of fussy to get them to fit in the jars. Well, um, I think it's worth it to get less floating. I think the jars look prettier. Again, here's another jar that was halves instead of slices. I have a lot less floating. And I did a really good job of debubbling. I made sure that I debubbled really well. The other thing I wanted to mention is don't skimp on headspace trying to cram more peaches in your jar than should be in there. It's easy to do that because you don't want your fruit to float so you're trying to take up as much space as possible, but your headspace is really important to prevent siphoning. So really make sure you do have a good half inch of headspace at the top to help with siphoning. So um, headspace, half of an inch, and you wanna make sure you're doing that well. Also, I did notice in my first batch, I had a little bit of siphoning, so I was kind of testing things out. My first batch, I just basically, I let them sit five minutes, but then took them out. My other batches, I've let them sit 10 minutes, and I'm noticing I have a lot less to no siphoning. So that cooling down process is important to prevent siphoning. The fruit float issue, all you, the best you can do is um, pack your fruit in as good as possible. Like I said in our little experiment today, I don't think hot packing versus raw packing uh, makes a difference in fruit floating. That's just been my experience and I've done quite a bit of fruit. Um, so I don't know that that makes a difference. I will say that the variety of peaches, cause I've canned a, var a variety of varieties of peaches, um, I think maybe that can make a difference because I've had some that float more than others. Uh, last fall I did a batch of late season peaches and I didn't have any floating with them. So uh, I can't remember what the variety was and I'm not sure what variety this is. They were just labeled South Carolina peaches so I don't really know what they are. But these had way more floating issues than what I had in what I canned last fall. So. 
you know, all you can do is just do the best you can. Just know if you are a newbie, your fruit floating is totally normal and it does not hurt anything. Siphoning, if you do expense, experience siphoning, as long as you still have half of the half of your jar full of liquid, it's still good. Just know that the fruit that's on top of the liquid will discolor a little bit. Um, so you might want to eat those jars sooner rather than later. The longer they sit, the more discoloring they may experience, but the fruit is totally fine to eat as long as you have half of your jar filled with liquid. So there's that. So I hope that this video was helpful to you guys. I hope that if you are a newbie and you've been afraid to can up fruit, that this will inspire you to do so. And peaches are wonderful. They are one of my favorite fruits to have on my shelf. Like I said at the beginning of the video, my family just loves them. So um, I hope that you will give them a try. Change things up. Like I said, I will leave a list of things in the description box that I talked about earlier in the video of ways to jazz up your fruit syrup uh, so that or your sugar syrup to kind of give it a different flavor um, profile. Um, there's lots of fun ways to do that. So I will leave those ideas for you in the description box. As always, thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time, guys. Have a great day.